Thanks, Goose. Shelter was a game that saw us experiencing the harsh realities of Mother Nature's cruel world, as we took on the role of a mother badger trying to defend and feed her cubs in the wild. Yes, for baby badgers, all manner of dangers lay waiting in the wilderness. Creatures in the dark, predators in the air, not to mention starvation and exposure. It was a surprisingly emotional and painful journey, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was, which is why I was both excited and apprehensive at the news of a sequel. In Shelter 2, you play a mother lynx. Well, my heart was a mess from the get-go, because check this cuteness. And if that doesn't get the hooks of emotional attachment in deep enough, this time you actually get to name them all. Ah, I know. I actually named all of my kittens after us. One called Hex, Bajo, Goose, and Hingers. As your kittens are hungrily mewing in your den, your first task is to venture out and hunt down some food and bring it back to them. This will give them the strength to leave the safety of the den and follow you out into the wild. Shelter 2 is different in many ways, mostly because unlike our little friend the badger, the lynx is pretty high up in the food chain, so predators aren't much of an issue. Threats to the lives of your little kittens are almost non-existent. You're virtually free to chase and catch rabbits to your heart's content to make your kittens strong. Yeah, I was a little bit disappointed by that. Without the threat of predators, your main focus is on finding food. And that got a little monotonous and just felt unchallenging. It seems like they tried to fill this gap with other collectible elements within the game, but it's a far less engaging experience. Yeah, the game goes to all this effort to set up an emotional connection between you and your kittens, but they're rarely ever in danger. Well, as similar to the first game, you do need to keep them all equally well fed, which can be hard to do. Your prey consists mainly of rabbits, and they're quick. Mother Lynx tires easily, with an energy meter that can only be filled by consuming food herself. So it's a balancing act of trying to keep all of your kittens equally well fed, as well as yourself, as the seasons change. And, you know, that's not easy. What are you saying, Hex? Well, I just got a bit caught up chasing rabbits, you know, for food. And I thought I made sure I had everyone, just the little babies are so slow to catch up. But before I knew it, I turned around and... One, two... Three. <gasps> Where's Bajo? I can't believe you let me die of starvation. I'm so sorry. I went back to look for you. I caught a rabbit and I was searching for ages, but the trees all look the same in the snow. Bad. You're a bad mother. You should feel bad. You know, apparently this is a legitimate thing though for big cats like cheetahs and stuff who have to run so far and so fast to catch prey for their young. Apparently sometimes they go so far that they lose their babies because they can't find their way back. Oh, just another harsh lesson of nature taught to us by shelter, I suppose. <laughs> Pressing on, the seasons turn and the landscape unfolds as you and your young continue the fight for survival. This sequel takes more of an open world approach to the landscape, rather than setting out specific environmental areas and challenges for you to get through. And again, I found this a little dull. Yeah, I found myself remembering that bushfire sequence from the first game and the river rapids. There were just so many wonderful moments of hardship. Here I spent most of my time just pretty lost. The map is really difficult to navigate, and apart from the changing seasons, there's not a whole lot of variety to the areas you'll encounter. This time around, I found the screen a bit busy and a bit messy, and perhaps it's because it's more open now, more open world, but I still think the art style is quite beautiful. I love the art style in this game, and the way they've incorporated it into the seasonal changes is so lovely. I also really liked the rune-like designs of the landmarks and the celestial constellations. They all just harken back to something ancient and magical. After seasons of hunting and foraging, your kittens will grow into full-size lynxes themselves and get the chance to take on bigger prey. That was a cool moment, wasn't it? Setting out with your fully grown pack and hunting together. Yeah, they can keep up with you now and you feel a swell of pride. Hunting for deer is a little more exciting, but they're tougher to find. So to stave off hunger, you'll still be mainly relying on rabbits. The bulk of this game is rabbit hunting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the coming of age of your offspring is bittersweet, however. Because as adults, a life of solitude calls them away, and Mother Lynx is left to hunt alone once more. We won't spoil the ending, but overall I will say that this sequel lacked the challenge, thrill and impact of the first, which is a real shame. Yeah, you can go back and start the game all over again. 
expanding your family tree by playing as one of your now adult offspring. Except for poor baby Bajo, of course, may he rest in peace. Sadly, there isn't really enough to warrant a second playthrough. Well, unless you're feeling an enormous amount of guilt, maybe, for letting one of your children die, and perhaps you want to atone for that. Yeah, all right, you've made your point. But sadly, I agree. For me, I think its biggest fault is just that open world approach and the lack of any environmental challenge. It really took something away from the game. What are you giving it? Well, this is still a wondrous experience and an interesting take on the circle of life. I did like the first game better, though. I'm giving this two out of five stars. It's two from me as well.